For a second example of Lagrange multipliers, let's look at this function of two variables. Let's find the minimum value of the function x squared plus y squared on the level curve y cubed minus 3x squared y equals 1. Notice that this level curve is already written in the form g of x and y equals a constant. Now I'm going to show you a couple of tricks as we go along in this one. One of them is going to be this one will be this problem will be a little bit easier to go through if I put the Lagrange multiplier over with gradient f rather than with gradient g. Remember that all this equation says is that the two gradient vectors are parallel to each other, so it doesn't really matter which side I put the lambda on. Uh, let's look at that. The gradient of f is equal to 2x and 2y, and the gradient of g is first the derivative of this with respect to x, which is a negative 6xy, and then the derivative with respect to y, which is 3y squared minus 3x squared. So if I set lambda gradient f equal to gradient g, then to begin with, I get something that looks like this. Now something that's really um, clear to me is that I have some common factors that I can take out of each of these two vectors for example, I could factor a 2 out of the first vector, so this is 2 lambda times x comma y equals, maybe over here I could factor out a negative 3, leaving a 2xy. Factoring out a negative 3 is going to reverse this difference and make it an x squared minus y squared. Now I can divide both sides by this negative 3. I'm just going to cross that out. Look what I have right here. Lambda is some number that I don't know, just representing a scalar multiple. So if I multiply lambda by negative two-thirds, I'm just going to get another constant. Now I could replace this by maybe another variable, lambda tilde, but nothing's really going to be gained by giving it a different so I'm just going to absorb the negative two-thirds into lambda and just continue with lambda. So let's distribute that. I have lambda x comma lambda y equals 2xy comma x squared minus y squared. Our setting components equal lambda x is 2xy and lambda y is x squared minus y squared. Notice by, that by putting the lambda on the left, I have the lambda on the simpler side of these two um, equations. And also, by absorbing that negative 2 thirds in, my coefficients are just easier to deal with. Now, notice that this is a system of two equations, but there are three variables, x, y, and lambda. We're going to add on a third equation, as always. That third equation is going to be the constraint y cubed minus 3x squared y equals 1. And that's going to be the system of equations we need to solve. Now, both of these equations are fairly complicated. But notice that first one looks like something we can work with. So if we name these guys equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3, let's play with equation 1 for just a minute. If lambda x is equal to 2xy, then by subtracting lambda x minus 2xy equals 0, or by factoring, I get that x times lambda minus 2y is 0. So either x equals 0 or lambda equals 2y. Let's call these cases 1 and 2. So one at a time, we're going to take the information from the case, 
substitute it back into equations one through three, and solve what we hope is going to be a simpler system. So let's look at case one first. I'm going to take x equals zero and substitute it into equations one, two, and three. Plugging into equation one, I just get that zero equals zero. Not very interesting. Equation two, when I replace x with zero, I get that lambda y equals negative y squared. And plugging x equals zero into the third equation, I get that y cubed equals one. So here we don't really even need the second equation. If y cubed equals one, that means that y cubed minus one is zero. So y minus one times y squared plus y plus one is zero. So if we, of course we get the answer y equals one. If we were to use the quadratic formula on this, we would get complex solutions. So here, x equals zero, y equals one. So that's the only solution to case one. 